Okay, I stopped with, you know, why is he doing 42 here? One more time. Paragraph 1 of his prayer, legal paragraph 1, starts at 49, ends at 49, which means the people reading the prayer knew to count the meter. They knew to organize it that way because he's doing it very obviously deliberately. The 49 is the number of missed sabbatical years. 434 years was a period over which those sabbatical years were missing, which means that the last four years of Solomon, not merely the period from Rehoboam forward, but the last four years of Solomon also was when the sabbatical, the, the you know, obeying the sabbatical years stopped. Because it's 434, not 430, you're not going to have it be more than, I mean, technically you could argue that it's 49.5 sabbatical years missed. But I don't know if he's really trying to do that. Plus, you can't split a syllable. Okay? So that's the indictment. For 434 years, we haven't been observing the sabbatical years. The number of sabbatical years missed is 49. I'm now praying to you in the 49th year of the 70 you decreed for the rebuilding of the temple because it's going to take time to rebuild the temple. And now that the sabbatical years are up, the land has had its Sabbaths. I'm going to ask you now to send people back to the land so they can rebuild the temple so that it gets built by the time the 70 years is up. That's what Daniel's prayer is about. The question in my mind is, okay, I get that. And you can get that from the text, except you won't know the numbers because nobody's doing the meter. And the Jews have forgotten how to do the meter. You can look at that, and you can look at that, and you can look at that, and you know, oh, now I know why God talks about 62 weeks. It's like a reimbursement of time. Hi, here's the amount of time that Israel didn't do what she should have done. So now I'm going to grant you 434 years out of 490 to get it right. Which they did do. They started observing their sabbatical years. So they got shenny. They got a chance to do it over. Okay? Because of Daniel's prayer. But see, now you know why God replies with 62 weeks. Because that's in Daniel's own prayer, which you wouldn't know if you didn't know the meter. That's paragraph one, straight up text indictment. Tied to specific time periods, tied to going all the way back to David at Hebron in a retrospective exposition of all the kings. And each syllable and word in here is tied to a verse that Daniel was reading in Kings and Chronicles. And that's what footnote E will show you. Really shocking stuff, actually. Shows how Daniel was, what verses he was thinking of while he's talking. Okay? That's why it's so important to understand this stuff. And since I wrote it all out, you can tell me if I'm wrong. You know, I'm exposed too. So what? Okay, 9.13, end of the end of the indictment. 9.14, transition. Yeah, God has finally brought about what he promised under the law of Moses to do to us for our 434 years of not observing the 49 sabbatical years missed. He brought it about. But notice, God has brought it about. And then he uses 42 syllables to say that. Which means he's carrying the timeline Forward another 42 years to what? 490 minus 14. Why? Well, 49 years are sabbatical years that Israel did not observe. Okay, but that's still 49 years passing. That's still another 49 years of time. Okay, well then aren't more sabbatical years due on the 49? Yeah, how many? Seven. So 49 and 7 are really missed. Not 49. But they have to go back and rebuild a temple now. In the 49th year that it's down, that's why Daniel's praying. They have to go back.
but then what happens to that extra 7? Because it's not 7 short with the other 7 being, you know, the tribulation which has been predicted since Moses. There's another 7 missing. The 7 due on the 49 sabbatical years. And the 49 sabbatical years are up, but the land has to finish its Sabbath. They have to go back and work now. The land can't have any more Sabbaths. The time is up. The time that God said, hi, you're going to be down. The land is going to have its Sabbaths for the 434 years you didn't observe. Okay, but that part is made up. But what about the extra seven? It's not made up. That's what's so important about understanding God's answer. Because what is God's answer? God talks about the 49, seven weeks, remember, in God's answer? Daniel 9, 24 through 27? Seven sevens? That's 49. Now you know where it's coming from. And then when he says, you know, the 62 weeks? That's 434. And then the extra seven is reserved in Daniel 9, 27. Oh, but wait a minute. There's another seven missing. Yeah. So that's why Daniel's debiting the extra seven that didn't get paid and can't get paid. That's why he's praying. He doesn't know what's going to happen to that other seven. That's why he's praying. Hi, Dad. Yeah, please rebuild, but um, I got to deduct 14, no longer 7. I got to deduct 14 from this timeline. Isaiah had done the same thing. Please rebuild, but um, my math, the balancing, only takes me to 476 now. It doesn't take me to 483. So he's not merely petitioning God to rebuild. He's petitioning God with what he thinks is the time left. All right? That's why when God replies, hi, 490 years, not 476, 490 years have been decreed. That's what it should have been. But Israel's already over budget now by 14 years. Daniel is asking for 476. God's replying with 490. But see, you can't know that if you don't know the meter. Because see, this is Daniel's own request. His total is 42. Not 56. 42. So he's taking you to what he knows as a limit of the time grant, and he's asking God to at least restore that, and God's replying to him, well, I can do more than that. But you don't know that that's what God means in his reply, unless you know the meter. See how important the meter is to interpretation of here, eschatology, which we've all been debating for how many thousands of years? Two. See how much of a difference it can make to know the meter, to understand Daniel? I mean, all of Christian theology, all of Jewish theology has to go right back to square one and get rewritten for all the new debates that have to occur due to the me knowing the meter. Because Brainout's interpretation of the meter isn't going to be the accepted interpretation. Even I don't accept it. I don't know what's the right whole interpretation. I know some of it. I'm trying to share it now. 42, not 56. Taking you to 476, not 490. Because Daniel's not sure what God's going to do with the other 14. Now, he uses 42, which is really significant. Because that is the number, that is... Basically, in, in the Bible meter from Genesis to Revelation, 42 is used for 2 times 21. 21 is the number of years Jacob was in Haran. He comes out with two families, not one. Okay? So he was in there for 21 years. He comes out with two families. So it's double blessing, double portion, inheritance, all that wordplay. 
using the number 42. So basically think of 42 as multiplying like rabbits, meaning spiritual growth. Double the amount of spiritual growth during the time, as it were, you're in the wilderness like Jacob was in Haran. Because Jacob had left home to get a wife. He comes back with two and 12 kids and their wives and who knows how many of the other kids. I mean, it's a total of 70 going into Egypt, two of whom died while he was, you know, in Israel, what would become Israel when he goes into Egypt. So 42 is a positive number. 42 means, 42 is Daniel's way of saying, hi, yes, you're right to hurt us, okay, and we're going to grow as a result. And I'm taking, I'm taking the timeline as far as I know to go with it. And at this point, in the forward part, he's at 496 BC. He's at syllable 294 in the Isaiah timeline of Isaiah 53.7. Walo yiftach piu. It's nelama. Walo, and then that's where it stops. That's the syllable count where it stops in Isaiah 53.7. After that is yiftach piu, you know, and he didn't open his mouth. Okay? He's stopping there. In the, in the Isaiah timeline, which takes you forward from when he talks to 496 BC. Okay? That's as far as he's going here. And what he's doing is he's reprising Moses also because that same syllable number takes you to Psalm 90 verse 15. Give us as many good days as bad days. So this is his way of incorporating by reference scripture in Isaiah 53, 7 and Psalm 90, verse 15, by means of the syllable count. This is real sophisticated use of scripture, isn't it? We didn't even know this method of rhetorical style existed. Okay? So 42 is tying back to Isaiah 53, 7, which is the, you know, the prophecy about how Messiah will die for our sins without protest. And linking that to Psalm 90, verse 15, give us as many good days as bad days, which is, of course, his jumping off point. Yes, God is you know, right to give us the bad days, but then not spoken, but implicit. Okay, now you've given us the gap, but bad days give us the good days. See how sophisticated this is? This is why Daniel was so smart he could want to hold Babylon. Okay? And 607, of course, is where he is in the first timeline, which is when he was taken to Babylon. Look at all that cleverness. Now, when he's talking in 538 B.C., that's 70 years after he was taken. Okay, he's talking at the end of 538 B.C. in November, just before, you know, the handwriting on the wall. Or just after it, sorry. Okay, now, that's his own 70th year of captivity. 70 years after, I mean, you know, rounded, when he talks. That's the historical voting period for the world to vote to know God, okay? And that historical voting period starts from 466 B.C. all the way to 397 B.C., which is when canon gets completed by Malachi. Okay, so Daniel's writing in all the prophecy that God has given him back in 538 B.C. about the future. So this jumping off point is the basis for his petition to God to rebuild based on what? The juridical future that was prophesied in Isaiah, that was prophesied in Moses, that Daniel is now incorporating by reference here as his petition as a past thing. Because Isaiah is in the past relative to Daniel, and Moses is in the past relative to Daniel. And those past prophecies have to do with the future growth 
of Israel, starting with Jacob, bringing out the two families from Egypt, therefore 42 and not 21 or some other number. Is that clever or why? Now, that part is kind of obvious, sort of a no-brainer. Stopping at the 14 is obvious, a no-brainer. What I can't explain to you is why he bookends 914 and 917 to end the 42 year. I don't know. I mean, I mapped it, what he, you know, because he's already shown us how the outline of his prayer works and how to read the meter. I'm supposed to just keep going forward in time. And so I do on this timeline. And I keep going forward in time on this timeline. I know the history in retrospect. So I know what he's referencing. But honey, I can't tell you why. I don't know why. Why is the 42 here? And why is the 42 here? I don't know. I make a stab at the answer. But is that answer right? I don't know. Okay? What I do know, and as much as I can tell you, is that he's using this future that was predicted since Moses and Isaiah here to say, Hi, you've already told us in the past through the mouths of your prophets, Moses and Isaiah, that there's a growth future for us. So I'm using 42 to depict my belief in that promise. But I can't take the timeline any farther past 476. I'm petitioning you, therefore, beginning in verse 15, to reserve, to restore, to rebuild the temple, to realize this future you gave to your prophets and therefore to Israel. OK? And you can see that in the text. It's not because of us, it's because of you. It's not because of how good we are, because obviously we're bad. It's because of how good you are and you promised. And by the way, here are specific promises that I'm referencing by using syllable counts so that the Jewish reader at the time, who was also used to the style of exposition, would know exactly what verses Daniel had in mind because they didn't use verse counts the way they do. They didn't call it Psalm 90 verse 15. They called it by syllable counts. So it would have been syllable 294 in Isaiah and syllable 294 in Psalm 90. Okay? That they would have known to reference. Because I knew when I read it. It's a different style of accounting of Bible cross-referencing than we know in the modern, you know, Bibles. They had a different way of cross-referencing scripture than we do. This is one of their other ways. Okay, so he's using 42. But I can't tell you why he stops it here. I was expecting him to take this 42 and put it down here, but he's not. Why? I don't know. What I do know is 742, which is the end, is 56 shy, okay, is 56 shy, which is, um, 49 plus 7. But he's not using either number here. It's, it's left in ellipsis, which is a very common thing, to leave that in ellipsis there. That's as much as I know to tell you. And what happened during those periods of time? I know what happened. Now, you could say, well, brain out, it has to do with other stuff. Okay. You can say, well, brain out, this 42 is there because of whatever your reason is. Okay, please tell me, because this is as much as I know. All right, now maybe later I'll know more. But right now, this is all I got. Peace out. Wait, I spoke too soon as usual. Okay. Um, the main purpose for making this Daniel revisit has to do with what I learned about this and this, okay? I still don't have an answer to the 42. You know, like in the movie Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the answer to the, all the questions of life is 42. Yeah, it's a very significant meter in the Bible. It means growth, double portion growth i.e. 2 times 21, the number of years that Jacob was 
in Heron, which is supposed to be, you know, like the paradigm for how the, the sons of the bond woman, the sons of the slave woman, you know, as well as, because I mean, he didn't want, he went into slavery for Rebecca, for Rebecca, no, Rachel, but he ended up getting Leah first. Okay, so you end up getting two sets of people, as it were, as your bride. It's, it's, it's the, the paradigm of the whole Bible. You know, prophecy of the Gentiles. The Gentiles were the ones that didn't want God. So as it were, you know, playing the game, you know, of uh, defense mechanism, the defense mechanism of projection. God says, okay, you don't want me. I don't want you either. The Gentiles didn't want God historically. The Jews did want God. And even the ones who did want God were disloyal to him, which is what Jan Daniel's just been saying. But what he's cleverly doing here by invoking 42 is he's invoking the prophecy that God gave for the whole salvation of the whole human race, Isaiah 53, 7, okay. He's unfolding that. Hi, yeah, we screwed up. We're the chosen people and we screwed up. But what about all the unchosen people that you also made promises to? They got to have a way to vote with their feet, Dad. Just like Jacob voted with his feet to leave Haran and come to Israel and then go to Egypt so that Egypt would get the word you get, Dad. Okay, well, you know, just because we're stupid and unfaithful doesn't mean that all the Gentiles, you know, Daniel's in exile, praying in a Gentile land, doesn't mean that all the Gentiles should be shorted, too. See, this is how clever Daniel is. No wonder God put him in charge of Babylon. This thing is so rich with meaning once you know the meter. I I don't I, I shouldn't even be allowed to know it. You see the point? 42, second family, Gentiles, 21 years. In slavery. God prospered him anyhow. Paradigm for the future. Israel, as it were, enslaved to the Gentiles. Got that? Yeah, God's going to bless her even while he punishes her. He's going to bless the Gentiles even while he punishes them. Because all of us have red blood. Well, it's not red until it comes out of your skin. See, God made each soul individually, Genesis 2-7. So your, God is your father just as much as he's my father. Am I Jewish by blood? I have no idea. Does it matter? No. Because God is my father and he's your father because he's everybody's father because he makes each soul at birth. 500 verses in the New Testament, on the Old Testament tell you so. One day I'll get around to documenting them if I live long enough. That's what 42 is. So see, 42 really is the answer to all the questions in the universe. But now you know what it means. But what I don't know is why 42 here and 42 here. But what I do know is that 434 from 742 is what? Let's find out. Daniel's prayer ends at 742 syllables. 750 syllables, years, times 7 is 5250, which minus 1050 is 4200, which minus 2100 was the number of years promised to the Gentiles. Okay, but 53.5 years prior to that, Abraham matured. So now the time of the Jews begins, and that's supposed to be 2100 also, which hasn't elapsed at the time Daniel's talking. 4146 is 2100 years. So 
Gentile time makes up the difference between 41, 46, and 4200, after which comes the millennium, Psalm 90, verse 4. Okay, but maybe it won't happen. And then we got the problem with Daniel and the delay of the temple and all other stuff. So it's no longer 42, 46. And especially because Daniel's talking now. David died in 963 BC. That was 3143 from Adam's fall. Plus 1,000 years after he's dead. Takes you to 4143. You see where this is going, I hope. If you've been following this meter thing, you should know this by now. Minus 4,257. And 57 sevens is 56, because 57 begins piggybacked on the sunset of 56. So 56 syllables is left out, because that's 49 plus 7. Now, what I had started to say before I got into the digression, because it was important, 742, which leaves out 56 already, minus 434 is 308. What's that? That's the number of days Noah was in the boat from the time he entered the boat until his 601st birthday. God made him wait until the 57th day after his birthday to enter the boat. And then he makes him wait until 57 days after his 601st birthday to leave the boat. Which means that Noah was born on what would later be called Passover. That's what the math means. Now, you know, in the video description, there will be a link to the Noah channel. So you can look up all that and read the, you know, flood precedent stock. Again, I'm going faster because this stuff has been out for years. And I'm trying to just get it quickly said. Daniel's making a play on the, the promise to the Gentiles. And Noah represents that. Because he was the last of them. I mean, Shem was his son. The Semites begin with Shem. See the point? Shem means name. Being called by the name. Name of God. Ha ha. Okay? So what Daniel is cleverly doing here, by difference in the 470, 434 and the 742 down here, is he's, as it were, recalling to God's mind his promise that he wouldn't wipe out mankind because of Noah, who represents the whole idea of the promise to the Gentiles. Noah represents a lot of things. Okay, being in the Ark, Ark of Christ, Ark of the Covenant, la, la, la. I mean, there's a whole lot of rich metaphor there. But just by taking the difference in the syllable counts, Daniel's evoking the promise that God made to Noah when he put him in the boat. So the difference is 308. Paul plays on that in Ephesians. He, Paul adds seven because, ha ha, the extra seven years that are missing here. See, Paul knew what the meter meant in Daniel. The extra seven meter missing here is going to be added by Paul. And, of course, Paul's whole, you know, meter in Ephesians 1, 3 through 14 is 434, which with 56 equals 490. He's playing on Daniel 62 weeks, and it's Daniel who brought up the, the 62 weeks because that's the number of missed sabbatical years. That's why God brings up 62 weeks in Daniel 9.26.
You see, all this is tagged and related, and it's all in the meter. And look at what a different interpretation you start to get about what Daniel's talking about versus what everybody says about Daniel. And then you realize, oh bleep, we better go back to square one, find out what this meter is, figure it out first before we can tell you what Daniel means. Because obviously, he means you to know the meter, to know what he's talking about. And then if Paul's playing on Daniel's meter, then how do you read Paul? Well, obviously what we're reading in Paul is not what Paul means because Paul is playing to the meter of Daniel. So now until you know what Paul means by playing on the meter of Daniel, then you don't know what Paul means. Seriously. Christianity, Judaism, all the denominations have to go back pretty much to square one and learn what this meter is before they can say anything anymore. Does it mean that everybody's wrong? No. In fact, what I'm finding out is there's a lot of validation of a lot of the, you know, mainstream concepts in Judaism, in Christianity. Okay? But the tweaks are pretty significant, don't you think? Daniel's invoking the promise to the Gentiles here. By the syllable count difference, by the fact that the man of time is, is, you know, depicted as a Gentile, essentially. You know, first Babylon, and then Persia, and then Greece, and finally Rome. Those are all Gentile nations. So he's invoking the promise to the Gentiles as a consequence, and he's using the man of time from Daniel 2 to do his timeline here, and starting with the 42 to do his timeline here because that's when he himself is captured in a Gentile nation. See how clever this is? Now, is Brain out right in what she's saying? I have no idea. Is it plausible? Yeah. Where do you go from here? I don't know. Ask God. 